Then all of a sudden, Bodog became sort of a uh, you know a player in the industry. And then at that point, what were you thinking? The, the thing that really differentiated us was the way we positioned ourselves as a brand. We just didn't consider ourselves to be necessarily a gambling company. We thought we were an entertainment company, right, right, right. and possibly something a brand that could go farther than being in the entertainment right. business. Kind of like the way things. Playboy was with like new women. Yeah, and I studied a lot of other guys whose uh, ability to create brands is right, so right, well known. Right. You know, Virgin and. Uh, number yeah. of others, Playboy is one of them. And uh, I factored that all into my business model. So at, so at that point, uh, did, you, did you get a lot of like flack from other people saying like, why you, like in the industry saying, like, why are you drawing so much attention to us? Or were they, were nah. they, did they support you or? No, no, no. That only happened after the UIGA came out. Right, right. And as I said before, when we first started this interview, those people that's, that think that are just flat out wrong. I mean, the public companies are what caused the UIGA. Right, the right. Politicians in Washington have said it publicly. And they were crowing about the fact that the public companies left the market after it happened. I mean, this, this marketing stuff I was doing, it was would have been, you know, sort of a little bit of background noise to what was happening right. with the public yeah. markets. You were talking before. I mean, you were obviously like uh, you you had a lot of things going for you at the start. You you had you know skills before other people realized they were th very valuable. You were positioned. You were eager. Um, what would your advice be to people who want to start their own successful businesses just like you did now? What's your general advice? Well. <laughs> I mean, clearly the internet is was just an absolute paradigm shift, right. and I caught the wave right at the right, start. Right. And there was some luck involved. I just happened to have been introduced to it right. somehow. I, I think there was an engineering friend of mine. We were driving up to the ski hill once, uh, a year or so before I actually sort of got hands-on in the internet. And uh, he was talking about this internet thing. As I remember now, that's the first exposure, but it didn't really, it sort of, I thought, well, well that's kind of, you know, cool. Right. So you're kind of in the, in the right the place world. at the right time and had the ability to pounce. Yeah, so there's a little bit of luck involved in the timing and stuff like that. But honestly, there's going to be entrepreneurs coming, just a steady stream of them. Forever, yeah. And uh, you don't, a, a, a true entrepreneur doesn't really need a paradigm shift wave to catch. You, right. you, all you need is a good idea. Right, and hard work. And then hard work, exactly. And, 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 yeah, and have to have uh, some core skills. Yeah. So uh, what advice, uh, go, go for something that you like. I mean, it's really torture getting up every morning and working 14 hour days, seven right. days a week, doing something you don't like. Right. And that's what it's <laughs> like starting companies. Absolutely. It's like that for years. Did you ever doubt yourself? You don't seem like a person who would ever doubt yourself. Oh, yeah. It yeah? Was, yeah, the early first couple of years were pretty painful. I remember getting up in the morning and looking in the mirror and saying, uh, take the pain and then uh, <laughs> shuffling off to the office really? for another 14 hour day. Yeah. I so mean, you had to like motivate yourself to keep going. Yeah. And persevere. Yeah. Wow. yeah. No, it was, there, there were some hard years there. And I, when I started Bodog, I actually, before I started it in 1993 ish, I sort of had the idea of doing this. And actually, I, I got talked out of it. And then I went down to Vegas on a trip and I looked around and I said, damn. <laughs> Got, got to go for this. But I remember asking everybody, and they said, no, don't do it. Yeah, wow, and, really? And, and then I said to myself. Why? I, I w what was the reasoning? Oh, they just said it's like, just, just sounds like fantasy. I mean, for <laughs> most of the people, they had never heard of the internet before. Wow. I was just asking them, well, right, I've got right, this right. idea about, you know, doing sports betting. So a lot of people were saying, like, we're, we're just telling you, no, no, no. You didn't get any encouragement from out from outside, and you had to, like, find it all in yourself. Yeah, well, yeah, they all said no, and then I talked myself out of it, and I went to Vegas, and then I said, i got to give it a go. And went back and then of course everybody started talking me out of it again then one sort of cliff moment there was uh, when I said to myself I said okay you're gonna make a decision here right. I said on your deathbed which right. would you rather say to yourself that you had this great what you thought was a great <laughs> idea and you didn't have the balls to go for it or that you went for it and then you failed and I said well and I'd rather go for it and fail so yeah. that was it I just pushed everything aside and went for it man that's amazing I've had a lot of great ideas, didn't have the balls to go <laughs> for it. Well, it's tough. It's, <laughs> yeah, tough. it's tough. I mean, the fear of failure, is, it's a powerful force, right? Yeah, and also you just kind of believe people. Like, I remember in, in high school, I was a really good writer, and I wrote this play, and a lot of people liked it, but this one really hot girl read it. This is 100% true. She, she read it, and she said, people just don't talk like this. So I said, okay, never wrote anything again. <laughs> oh, wild, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and the irony is the chick wound up becoming a writer and one of these like cheesy chick writers who's like, you know, kind of sucks, but like other dumb chicks like her, so but whatever. At any rate, <laughs> we'll, we'll cut that. that. That was a tangent. But yeah, no, it's very impressive. So I think, right, I think that the answer is there's no easy solution to, uh, to becoming rich, but believe in yourself. Don't do, be lazy. Do something you like. Right. Then it's easier like. to get out of bed because it's going to be hard. Right. Acquire skills and, and don't expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's back up to that one. Yeah. You got to, well, maybe 
I don't know if you got to remember because you might not know this, <laughs> but I went to university for 10 years. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in General Sciences and I have a Master's degree in Management Finance. I so, didn't know you had an MBA. Yeah. yeah, so I didn't just fall right. out of a tree. Right. I actually had some prep work. And then the opportunity came, and then you pounced, and then it exploded. Exactly. Right, right. Now I guess let's get into uh, to, uh, what happened um, after it all exploded, and you wound up just, <laughs> <be> <laughs> you went from, from you know, internet technologist to, uh, to star marketer to just international playboy, right? That's exactly. who you are now, right? Exactly. And it was really funny is I was on a holiday and I came up with this idea of how to do brand differentiation. I'd already had the business basic Bodog model out there. But I, I actually hadn't originally contemplated using myself as a brand ambassador. So I was on this holiday. I was in Asia actually, which is kind of ironic because I ended up spending most of my time back there these days. But uh, I came up with this idea of using myself. So I came back and I sat my managers down in my little tech company in Vancouver and I said, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be this uh, brand ambassador guy. And the head guy, he's my IT manager at the time, a guy named Carl Schmidt, he says, no, you're not. I said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, you're not one of those marketing fancy pants guys. I said, well, how do you know, Carl? Because <laughs> I've wow. been only running, you know, yeah, sort yeah, of like yeah. a hands-on, what, what would effectively been a, like a, a chief operating officer kind of role. And they just had this idea of me as being this, this geek. Wow. And then I just said, well, no, I'm going to do this other thing. I'm going to start using myself. So I, I didn't even know if I could do it myself, for sure. I just thought I could, you know, confidence. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> coming through my, uh, whatever. And so I went and hired this camera to follow me around, see what I look like on a camera. Yeah. And then that's how it all started. I said, I think I can do this. And uh, so I started doing it. And then I realized that it was actually a little bit harder than I thought. So I flew down to LA and I took this uh, media training course and sort of like uh, pseudo acting, sort of, wow. you know, acting for dummies thing. It was only like a one week course. It was combined them both together. And then I said, okay, that'll make me a little bit better at this. And so then I went back out and then I just jumped in and started doing stuff. That's amazing. A theme I'm getting here is you've got so many no's that came cascading at you, but you kind of ignored them all. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty key, much it. Key elements of success. <laughs> what, what if you had begun to uh, go bald in your 20s or 30s? Do you think that would have affected your internal confidence? <laughs> no, nah, I just shave your head. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it. Shave your head. I have a little bit of a problem. Not a complete problem, but a little bit of a problem. But up on top. <laughs> All right, so 